So here's my kind of simple diet clues, because we said, you know, fine gold seems to be about don't eat this, don't eat that, don't have that. So what should we eat? Look for healthy protein. Remember how we talked about all of those chemicals that are in your brain? All of those are proteins, okay? They're basically a protein molecule with a little sugar chain sticking off the end of them. So they're like a little, little swimming chemical there. So you need to make sure you're getting the healthy proteins. So, um, you know, the red meat is, is fine, you know, as long as it's lean meat. White meats are fine. Fish, you know, is probably the best kind of, of proteins. But making sure you are getting plenty of protein. We're, we're in a culture at the moment that's really carb obsessed, you know, everything's about carbs, um, but you need to make sure you're getting lots of protein. If you're looking for a particular um, diet, um, the Zone Diet, if, if you want to write that down or if you've never heard of it, it's a book called The Zone Diet, but it's basically a high, a high protein, kind of low carb kind of a diet, but if you're wanting to improve brain function, then it's, it's actually a very good diet for that. So low GI, have everyone heard of GI, glycemic index? So it's quite trendy at the moment, but basically we want to get everything in the biggest possible um, carbohydrate state so that your body actually has to break it down and turn it into sugars. If you just put it in straight as sugars, then it's very quick, very kind of s s temporary energy. Whereas if you put it in as big blocks, which is your carbohydrates, which is lots and lots of sugars all put together, um, then your body can, can produce its own sugar levels as it needs them. So that's why we need to be low GI. Good fats. We're in the obsessive compulsive no fat culture at the moment. You know, fats, don't have any fat, don't have any fat. That's very, very dangerous because you know your cells, the outside of your cell is basically fat. Your skin is basically lots and lots of, of, of fatty molecules. So you have to have good fats. So your omega-3s, your omega-6s, your essential fatty acids, okay? So again, fish is, fish is great, vegetables are, are, are the source for these kinds of things. Olives, you know, are the best fats. Avocados are, are really good fats. Um, so low or no dairy. Dairy is, is a weird thing in our culture because, again, we're totally dependent on it. It's like we've been convinced that if we don't get dairy, we're going to be osteoporotic. You know, there's lots of other ways to get calcium, like uh, almonds or, or, or eating salmon again or... Or even supplementing. You can just supplement with, with calcium very simply without having to have this other animal's baby's milk that its own baby doesn't even drink after a few months. You know, Why are we living on another animal's mother's milk? Um, it's a weird concept. Um, so if you're not willing to go no dairy, then go low dairy. Reduce the amount of milk you're drinking. Don't get rid of the cheese, which is the stuff that's got all the really bad fat in it. Um, you know, Try to minimise it. If you were going, oh no, I've managed to give up everything except butter. I, I just cannot get, get myself off butter. But that's basically the only dairy I have now is, is, is um, butter. We, in my, my house we use oat milk instead of a cow's milk. Um, so that, that's a, you can make that yourself or you can buy it from the health food section of, of most supermarkets. Um, some people like soy milk. The problem with soy milk is it's, it, because it's a very high protein milk, it's, it's showing up now as one of the, the, the newest allergies. Lots of people are developing allergies to soy now. And the other problem with it is it's very high in your estrogens. So people start to find their hormonal system can get out, out of balance if they're, if they're having too much soy. So don't, don't use soy as your kind of, I don't have any dairy now, I just live on soy. Like tr Try to keep soy as, as just one option of, of what you're doing. Um, the other thing about soy is it's the most likely product in your pantry to be genetically modified. So if you've got any particular kind of concerns about genetically modified stuff, then if you're going to buy soy milk, only buy it organic and only buy it if it says non-GM. Um, uh, diversifying grains. The other most likely thing to be GM is your oils. You know, your canola oil is the other thing that's most likely to be genetically modified. Um, with your grains, try and diversify your grains. Like we just live on white bread, you know, white bread, white bread, white bread, biscuits, which is white flour, cakes, which are made out of white flour, pasta, which is made out of white flour. You know, what happens to barley? What happened to, you know, all of these other grains that, that are in there? I, I often make my own bread and I use spelt flour, I use 
uh, barley flour, I use rye flour, I use you know, and normal flour as well to, to sort of fill it out. So try and diversify your, your grains that you're having in your diet. What, what is spelt flour? Spelt flour is, it's, a, it's not a, 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 most of your flours are kind of, they're not genetically modified, but they're hybridised flours. Spelt flour is, is the original kind of wheat grain. So it's a much kind of less process. Like in buying bread with that. I'm not sure what it was. You can get spelted yeah. breads, yeah. No, yeah spelted no, grains no, and spelted, yeah, spelt flour. If you're kosher, then, then you live on spelt flour. You don't have any of the other flours. Um, so the Jew, Jews have got a lot, a lot right, you know, with the way that they eat. They um, eat very natural, unprocessed, you know, very simple kind of foods. So spelt is still wheat, but it's, it's, it's a kind of an older um, form of wheat almost. So go natural, go unprocessed. Try and get stuff that isn't in packets, in plastic, you know. Guaranteed you that stuff's been put through fairly rigorous kind of chemical um, interventions at some point in their processing. And H2O is vital, like 70% of our body is water, 70% of your nervous system is water, so guess what you need? Lots and lots of water. Um, what we talk about with water is alkalising your water, so either put a little bit of sodium bicarbonate or, or you can get magnesium carbonate from, from the health food store and you just put a little bit of that in, in your bottled water. It's like mineral water basically, you know, if you prefer to drink mineral water um, or spring water. Just Something that's got... Uh, just got to keep the right out of it, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's the next thing. Yeah. So, I mean, to get the fluoride out, you have to actually have, a, have to have a reverse osmosis. You can't just filter it through a jug. So the government's doing a good thing for a reverse osmosis business because um, they, they can be what, up to $1,000, those kind of systems. So what about some vitamins? So essential fatty acids, we talked about good fats. So our fish oils, you know, your omega-3s, your, your DHA and your EPA. So your, your primrose oil, your fish oils. Uh, your flaxseed oils, you know, they've all got the good kind of oils. Olive oil is, is a very good oil. Canola is, is actually a, a good oil for cooking with. I wouldn't use it for, for salads and, and for, for general stuff, but, but it's good for cooking. But again, make sure that it's a non-GM non product if, if, you, if that worries you. Ma minerals, magnesium, zinc, chromium and selenium are the main minerals for your nervous system. Okay. Australia's soils are inherently low in magnesium, so most Australians probably do need to find a way of, of building up their <coughs> magnesium a bit. Um, zinc, chromium, selenium are all like antioxidants, so they're very good for, for helping your brain to keep healthy. And then antioxidants, so your vitamin A, your vitamin C, your vitamin E, and a thing called pycnogenol, which is like grape seed extract or pine bark extract. But there's other ones out nowadays too, like you know your mango steens and your goji berries, and you know if you come across some of those new ones, you obviously don't get the phone calls that I get every week. Someone says, "I've got this new wonder antioxidant. I'd like to come and show you it." Um, your B group vitamins are obviously good for the brain. You know, so your B1, B6, B12. You know your brain uses up, burns a lot, a lot of this stuff. Um, so particularly if you've got depression, then B groups are very important. Herbs, so the, the, the two most common are valerian and St. John's wort. Um, St. John's wort is literally like the natural antidepressant that you can have. Valerian is, is a natural valium almost. Um, the other one that's quite common is ginkgo. Has any people heard of ginkgo biloba? That's really good for circulation, so obviously getting blood to your brain is, is a good thing. And then amino acids, remember how I said your, the chemistry of your brain is proteins? So what builds proteins is things called amino acids. Sugars make carbohydrates, amino acids make proteins. Okay, so the, the main ones that you need for your brain are your D and your L-phenylalanine, L-tyrosine, L-glutamine and L-tryptophan. Um, so let's have a look at these. So your L-phenylalanine... Your body uses that to make dopamine, norepinephrine, and the endorphins. So, sounds like a good thing. Um, D-phenylalanine is, is um, in, to produce the encephalins, which are, the, again, the, the natural tranquilizers. 5-HTP, you can't get tryptophan anymore unless you get a doctor's prescription. Years and years and years ago, there was a, a contaminated batch of tryptophan that got into 
you know, into circulation. Someone died from the contaminant in the, in the product, so it got taken off the shelves and it's never ever found its way back on the shelves, which is a shame because tryptophan is literally probably the best treatment for depression. You know, it's probably even better than the, the um, medications. So instead we can get 5-HTP, which is hydroxytryptophan, which is like, you know, your body turns that into tryptophan and then turns that into um, serotonin. L-tyrosine is, again, is for your dopamine and norepinephrine. So you, your body uses tyrosine and phenylalanine, puts them together to make, you know, your dopamine and your norepinephrine. It's also very good for your thyroid gland if you've got an underactive thyroid. L-glutamine is what feeds your GABA. And then your L-cysteine or your homocysteine, remember that research paper they've just done at Deakin? That's what they were using basically the L-cysteine in, in people with bipolar, and that feeds your taurine pathways. So there's different arguments with how you should supplement